We're going to get to the developments with NATO in just a minute, but I want to start with this news out of Russia that days after President Putin condemned Yevgeny Prigozhin and his militia as, quote, treasonous rebels after their mutiny, we learned today that Putin sat down for a three-hour meeting with them. How surprising is that? Uh, very surprising, Elizabeth, and good evening to you. This is uh, a significant development. Uh, just several days after the, the, the mutiny on June 24th, uh, Putin uh, met with not only Prigozhin, but also, as I understand him, with 35 members of his, uh, his military leaders, his battalion commanders. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stunning turn of events. And then we find out you know, several days later, even after that fact. And so this is significant. I believe what Putin's trying to do is uh, he's got many audiences he's trying to address here, but certainly I think he's trying to keep uh, Prigozhin and his Wagner group, certainly the Wagner group commanders within arm's length uh, and to keep them inside of Russia as best he possibly can. And and uh, it, it's, it's, it's significant. So he's got the other audience that he's trying to play to is obviously the Russian domestic audience, right. but also his his commanders and his minister of defense as well. So this is, uh, it, it's it's significant. It's also very intriguing. I don't have a particular answer for you other than the fact that we just need to stand by and, and, and keep tuned in on this. Yeah, it's just an unbelievable development because Putin has ruled for more than two decades with an iron fist by killing or poisoning or arresting and, and imprisoning his opponents. What does this say about his grip on power or about how much he still needs Prigozhin? I think both. I think it says he's perhaps... Uh, Maybe just a little bit loss of, of his, his that grip that you refer to. Uh, but the fact is, is that he is, uh, again, still in charge and in power. But I think his leadership and his judgment's been called into question here. And so that he, again, feels that he needs to keep Prigozhin close at hand. Uh, we'll, in fact, several days after the 24 June mutiny, I was talking the fact that perhaps we'll never see Prigozhin. And of course, right. we haven't seen him in public yet. Uh, but uh, there he is. Apparently, he's still uh, still in Russia and uh, still within the, the, the Putin fold, I suppose. Yeah, there were a lot of people thinking Prigozhin might already be dead. So the fact that he was not dead, very much alive, and meeting with Putin for three hours is pretty, it's pretty stunning. In the meantime, President Biden has agreed to send cluster <laughs> bombs to Ukraine. Um, this is a weapon now that's been banned by 120 countries, including many of our NATO allies. Republicans in the United States are applauding the decision, while Democrats are very critical of it, saying it crosses a line and jeopardizes our moral leadership. What's your reaction? Well, my reaction is we're, we're in 500 days of this war, and the toughest part of the war is, a, is unfolding, and that is trying to dislodge a very uh, dug-in Russian defense uh, force there along the, 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 especially in the eastern part of Ukraine in that Donbass region. There are up to 15 miles of deeply entrenched positions of Russian forces. Think of World War I, all those deep, you know, trenches that uh, along, you know, the European line there, and fast forward that to the 21st century. Very difficult. This is the toughest operation for Ukraine to undertake at this point. They're also uh, outmanned, still outgunned, and they don't have the, you know, the ammunition to, to do just that. And so what the Biden administration has done, I think very effectively here, is providing them cluster munitions, I think will be very effective. It's a treacherous weapon, but it can go after, uh, you know, deeply entrenched soldiers as well as armored vehicles and so forth. And if Ukraine is going to have a chance of dislodging this Russian force out of their territory, Elizabeth, I think cluster munitions are going to be uh, important and key yeah. to making that happen. And we should note that Russia has been using cluster bombs in Ukraine. They certainly have. Uh, and so, by the way, the signatories of that convention that you mentioned that was actually signed back in 2010, the three signatories that are not on there, United States, Ukraine, and Russia. Uh, so this isn't necessarily something that would be illegal or against international law, but uh, I think uh, it's, it's a good move for the administration to provide cluster munitions for Ukraine at this particular moment. Uh, it's significant. All right. General Newton, always great to talk to you about all of this going on. And there'll be plenty of news coming uh, out of NATO this week with uh, President Biden set to meet, meet President Zelensky. I'm sure we'll have you back to weigh in on that. Thanks so you much bet. for being here. Good night, Good night Elizabeth. Okay. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.